Hello everyone, my name is Swingpoint and welcome to Resident Evil Resistance. This is the multiplayer game bundled with Resident Evil 3. And today we're going to do a build for Nikolai. But it's going to be way more than just what the build is. Because <laughs> it's Gun Nikolai and you can figure out Gun Nikolai. All you got to do is go, oh, he's the gun guy. And then put a bunch of guns in your deck. This is the least creative thing anybody could ever do for Nikolai. So, what I'm going to do to add value to your time in this video is I'm going to give you a bunch of things that you might not know about Nikolai unless you've had a chance to play him a bunch. A bunch of things that you wouldn't figure out unless you had somebody tell them to you or you experienced them yourself, okay? This isn't just going to be, put guns in your deck and hello, here's my YouTube video. No, there's way more than that going on here, okay? So I'm going to be spitting off a bunch of numbers and a bunch of facts, things that might help you understand Nikolai better, okay? First off, Relentless. We already talked about Relentless in a previous video, the Counter Nikolai video, but in case you haven't seen that, Relentless on Nemesis, his fever skill, works in a way where each person who's tracked, the longer they're tracked, the faster Nemesis has cooled down. And more people tracked means Nemesis cools down faster. And if you down them, aka they're standing up, now they're laying down, that action will also reduce Nemesis's cooldown time. Now, let's talk a little bit about the guns themselves and why they matter and what we're going to do here and what makes Nikolai special. So if you're going to be going full gun Nikolai, do tracking rounds. You can do blood trail, and blood trail's cool. I do like blood trail. I don't think blood trail's really meant for gun Nikolai, though. Blood trail's really good on trap Nikolai. Blood trail's really good on any other Nikolai, and I do want to do different creative Nikolai builds. The first video we did on Nikolai is I actually introduced an idea of Trap Nikolai, but it was more so if you've never played Nikolai before and you're level one with him, run this kind of build. But now if you're going to run Gun Nikolai, I would recommend Tracking Rounds. The way Tracking Rounds works is after you shoot them, the bullets after that, they're all considered Tracked Rounds, meaning that they're going to take 20% more damage than they would usually take. Tracking puts a visual on you and it also makes it so that you're taking 20% more damage. And that's where things are going to start getting really, really interesting. Okay? But again, tracking rounds on Gun Nikolai. Now, here's something that not everybody's going to know. I'm going to give you numbers about mag expansion. There's two things here. And actually, let me tell you the things I know about each of them. So first off, firearm efficiency. Does what it says. It decreases the cost of firearm-related cards by one. But there's actually some cool things that happen with that that aren't so straightforward. So... Firearm efficiency affects clone in an interesting way. For example, take a look at air cannon. Air cannon costs two, but in this deck, I have efficiency mod firearms, and if I want to, I can have firearm efficiency equipped. If you have both of those going on, not only is air cannon gonna be reduced to a one cost, if you use clone, clone is still only gonna cost one. So, clone, usually what it does is it'll copy the last card you used, but increases its cost by one. For some reason, the game works in a way where it counts that number as zero and then adds one to a zero. So the lowest this card's ever going to get is one, but also the highest it's ever going to get is one, even with clone. So that means you could get two air cannons for the price of two. Okay? Now, another thing. This is where things get really interesting. Mag expansion. So let's talk about how mag expansion works. Each one of these guns gets a different amount of ammo added to them if you use mag expansion. Also, all the guns get their time duration expanded. So the guns that you control manually, machine gun, rifle, high cal rifle, you have 30 seconds in your camera with that device. If you have mag expansion on, that 30 goes up to a 45. So it's a 50% increase. Also, on turrets, turrets usually stay still for a minute by default. If you have mag expansion on, it's also a 50% increase, meaning that they can be in a camera for a minute and a half, which is a lot of time, and that can be really nice for a set-it-and-forget-it type of mentality where you're trying to set everything else up everywhere else. You put a turret down, you go on to your other objectives, and you don't have to worry about it for a while. A minute and a half on turrets, 45 seconds on manual weapons. As for how much it's expanded on the ammo side of things, a regular rifle is usually 6, it will go up to 10. A high cal rifle is usually 5, it will go up to 7 with mag expansion. A machine gun rifle is usually 50, it will go up to 80. So what's really cool about that is that you're getting way more time off, especially on that machine gun. 
and you're getting a lot more value out of your turrets here that you can get in area two and area three because these cost six a piece they're not cheap but you get a ton of extra stuff with them so then you're kind of balancing it's like well do i want the extra time and extra ammo or do i want to make them super cheap that's completely up to you that's when you have to make the choice between firearm efficiency and mag expansion but again just trying to give you guys some stuff that you might not know unless you do some testing because again telling you to run guns on nikolai isn't creative i need to give you something more so something more let's keep going <laughs> something else that's really cool about mag expansion that i did not mention already is that immobilizing rounds and air cannon typically only give you one shot per card right you load in your air cannon poof then it's gone if you have mag expansion on it will give you two immobilizing shots which can catch people off guard if you have mag expansion on you will get two air cannons poof poof so the end result is that you're going to be able to get a lot more time off the clock or just persist on them a little bit longer if they're on an objective if they don't think to shoot you out right away that can be a lot of extra wasted time if you have a mobilizing shot or air cannon okay okay now more things to know this is going to be really fun for you those of you that like damage and equipment let's talk about equipment and things you might not know about equipment so before we get into the damage let's talk about the other things so if we have ourselves some camera durability here camera durability makes more sense now than it did before the patch before the nikolai patch camera durability before is kind of a joke because camera durability before was kind of a joke Camera durability is much more interesting now because you have 20 points to work with and since the base value of cameras is higher, the base health of it, that means that these fuses are going to do more for you. To put it in more of a real life example, in area three, I had a Jill shooting at me with a Matilda and I only had greatly increased camera durability and moderately increased camera durability. Didn't even have this one on and Jill had to go through her entire Matilda and still wasn't able to take out one of my cameras. So that's 24 Matilda bullets that she wasn't able to take out my camera with. So that's a ton of time that you can use to shoot back or just waste their ammo and waste their resources. A big problem that masterminds tend to have is that survivors have too much going on in terms of resources. Camera durability is a way to go ahead and try to do something about that. Again, one of those things you wouldn't know unless you had a chance to test it out. Now let's talk about other things. You know, firearm duration, I don't care. Don't equip that. <laughs> but let's talk about shock absorbers. Now, when it comes to your cameras being stunned, it's the biggest pain in the butt. It's every time they shoot at you, you're stunned. Every time you shoot at them, they are stunned. Shock absorbers kind of help you fight that. Shock absorbers, if you have greatly and moderately, and then you also have gyroscope equipped that's going to cost all 20 points but you're not going to be stunned by anything even the mq11 usually if you're aware the mq11 is a stun lock on one of these cameras and there's like nothing you can do about it you just got to sit there and watch your camera die same thing if they're using a flamethrower you just got to watch your camera die but if you have all three of these equipped it doesn't matter at all. They're not going to be able to do anything to your camera, but it's still not going to have its durability boosted. So you take some, you get some. A lot of what I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to take as your own information and then determine your own play style. Another thing you can do is just run a little bit of this and then get a lot more camera control back, but you're still going to be at the mercy of an MQ-11. It's still going to stun lock you, but at the cost of them having to spend a lot of ammo. So it's really up to you how you want to police yourself there okay cooling fans if you run all three of them we've talked about cooling fans in previous videos but if you run all three cooling fans it will take your 10 second period in which you have to recover your cameras and will turn it into a five in case your camera gets shot out so this can be really really nice if you want to be a pest or just keep your cameras up if they keep shooting them out but again it's really up to you how you want to play now on to damage damage is really interesting okay so let's talk about all the different damage things that i found out for you if you want to go ahead and understand what Nikolai's max damage could be, I will make it really simple for you, but then I'm going to explain the numbers. So what's really cool about Nikolai is that he can track people really easy. Just by shooting at you or reducing your health, he's always tracking people. Heck, if you're really desperate to track somebody, you could use Radar Pulse. But to understand how much the tracking helps Nikolai, 
if you have all three of these gun damage things equipped. So you got greatly, moderately, slightly. You can take whatever damage you're going to do with any gun, whatever the base damage is. So the base damage on a machine gun is 50. Base damage on a rifle is 200. Base damage on a high cal rifle is 320. You can take that number and multiply it by 1.74. And that will be your new number that you will be able to get with Nikolai, assuming you're running all gun damage and they're tracked. Okay? And in case you're curious on how we get that, greatly increased damage is a 21% damage boost. Moderately is 15. Slightly is 9. So all that together is a 45% damage boost. So then you take that and you multiply it by 1.2 and you're going to get yourself 1.74, which is a 74% damage boost. So you can take any number at its base damage and multiply it by 1.74 and then that's how you will get your new number. And if you want to go a step further, you can take whatever your base damage is. So 50, 200, 320. You can multiply that by 2.61. And that's what your headshot damage would be at max damage, assuming that you have all this equipped and they're tracked. Meaning that you can hit a headshot with a high cal rifle that does 836 damage, okay? So to do that math for you guys, a regular machine gun body shot is going to go up to 87 damage. I think it goes 88 for some reason. And then a rifle is going to go up from 200 all the way to 348. But again, I think it goes to 349 for some reason. It just adds one for some reason. And then a high cal rifle body shot is going to go up to 557. So you're doing lots and lots and lots of damage. And then if you're curious about what the headshots are going to be, a machine gun is going to do 131 damage to the head. So you got 80 bullets and it's doing 131 per shot. A rifle headshot is a regular rifle, not a high cal. A regular rifle is going to do 522, and then a high cal rifle is going to do 836. Now, all these numbers, I'm spitting lots of numbers at you. Keep in mind, this is also going to apply to these turrets that he gets. So your rifle turret, your high cal rifle turret, and your machine gun turret are all going to benefit from all these things that you can put on your equipment, including that crazy damage and including that tracking. So... If you're the type of person that just likes to bully them with damage, have fun. You're going to do a ton. But what you're going to have to do at the end of the day is decide, do you want to balance it out with durability? Do you want to add a bunch of things somewhere else and then add something? You know, it's really up to you how you want to do it all. Okay? So what we have here is a match from our live streams that we do on twitch.tv slash swingpoint. Going up against a Valerie, a January, a Becca, and a Tyrone. And I'm ranked 36 Nikolai. This team in particular was very anti-Nikolai, not only because of their comp, but because of the way they were playing, which is why I picked this match. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this match, and if I feel like I have anything I want to say about what I was thinking and what I was noticing and what my strategy was as I was playing, I'll pause and interject. But let's just go ahead and watch the match, and I'll let you know what I think as we're going through. Shove it in my mouth and then uninstall while it's in my okay. um, I provide great assurances to my clients. You will fear. You will fear. And you will die. You will die. See, like they've been playing a lot of Nikolai. He's like, oh, dodge. You're gonna love this. You're gonna love it. Okay, so something here just happened, if you didn't notice. So in this particular build, I'm running two camera durability and I'm running two camera damage. So something that you might not know about January is that when she's using her lockdown skill, it's based off of how much health the camera has. Instant just goes ahead, it's a flat time no matter what. So that's one of the pro cons of each of those skills. So camera durability equipment makes it so lockdown takes longer on January, which could open up opportunities for you, especially if something else roaming on the map or if you have another camera angle on her. So in the top right hand corner, you can tell when she starts using lockdown and if she is using lockdown, it's a really quick way to tell. So she's going to stand there for a long time every single time she wants to use it because we have extra camera durability. Okay, something to think about. That's something I noticed right away when we were playing. Yeah. I don't really like the cards I have here either, to be honest. <laughs> Just like holding it down. These guys have played a match against Nikolai. I barely need to Look, they're all like this. hiding behind Look, doors and stuff. My eyes. It's like a squad of weirdos. <laughs> so part of what I did there was I knew that based off of what Tyrone did earlier, he was hiding behind the door. So I knew he was going to do it again, which is why I went ahead and used the immobilizing shot on the ground because I figured he was camping the door, trying to get an easy shot of my camera. So I knew I could get an easy five seconds out of him. Yeah, whatever. They got their wiggle game on and everything. Yeah, well. 
And I don't really have good guns here yet. I would like a turret in this corner, typically. Nope. Because then I can pressure them with a camera that's ahead of me there. But I didn't really get a good draw here. These guys have just been playing this nonstop. They're, like, paranoid about Nikolai. I miss here a ton. I keep thinking he's going to wiggle, and then he doesn't. Good. You can move to the more dangerous They like got their wiggle game now. on and shit too. So really right here all I'm trying to do is just count them a little bit, soft them up, make them use up their herbs. For me it's more about getting time off the clock with this gun more than it is taking them down. <laughs> because you can get 80 bullets with mega uh, expansion lord. To use it. <laughs> point. You can point one of you. I will still Your client will be happy with if the they're field, putting a trophy in, they have iframes, so you can't afraid, touch them, young ones. unfortunately. This is a Nikolai death squad. This, is, this team's meant to destroy Nikolai, so they're this, going to. She's going to come hack me fine. right now. No? Well, surprising. I'm using my net this preset. This team's meant to destroy me. I should That's make one exist. for Nikolai, but I haven't yet. So, I think what I end up doing here... I don't know if I really explained it, but I'm like, I'm going to try something. And what I'm planning on trying is in this particular area, there's kind of a triangle of cameras. Each area tends to have at least one triangle. And that's Nikolai's, that's Nikolai's time to shine. So what I end up doing here is I put two turrets. <laughs> it doesn't really work out. But I put two turrets up on these cameras, and then I hit them from the back with a machine gun because we have three guns to use. So you can kind of see how it works out. But you have to count on the turrets being smart, and they're not. But... Here's how this goes. I'm gonna try some. Like, I wish the turrets would just stay where you have them pointed and then they would turn if a person shows up. They don't work that way. Yeah, they even bought guns for it. This is not big, so Jan's already down. I don't claim to have the best aim with this. I use a controller on PC. It's Where tough. Are... <laughs> Where has it been? It's still not. It didn't shoot at them once, Chad, the whole time. Is it still just... St what in the f*** is wrong with this thing? So something I did there, in case you didn't notice, was she used her camera rotation jam. I understand that this turret is jammed, but it wasn't working before that either. But in the other area, I used my camera shield. If there's a camera rotation jam, and then you go ahead and use a camera shield, the camera is now capable of doing things again. So that's a way to disable the effect of January's ult. Garbage. Pure garbage. Oh my lord. So I'm just trying to find Yorick, set up for that. It's a lot about trying to figure out where your angles are gonna be. And now what I did here, I did this on purpose. Sorry if I'm interrupting a bunch, but there's a reason why I did what I did here. So you could tell that I put the turret in that room and they're eventually gonna walk in there. I didn't lock the door or anything. I wanted to make it easy for her to walk in there. So what I ended up doing is I took Nemesis from a different camera that was going to be able to get behind them, and then I put Nemesis on the back end of Valerie, and I'm pretty sure I had the door locked on the other side of this room. That way she'd be encouraged to get pushed into that room and then also wouldn't be able to get out. So I put Nemesis behind her, again, to push her into this room so the turret could do work, and I could just follow her into the room with Nemesis. Okay? So let's go back here make sure we're on the right area and you can see it again. There will be no escape! My turret sucks, though. I don't think it's hit her once. So Yorick actually helped a lot there. And then same with Becca. Ooh, that helped me. She runs in there. Just die! And now, what I'm trying to do here is I know they have a Tyrone, or he's probably a Dr. Tyrone, because that's what everybody's running lately. I also see that he has red health, 
So I'm probably going to check the map to see if he gets a little antsy. And if he does, he's an easy down. So I'm just going to hold my position here and be like, you know what? Try me. Come pick them up. I dare you. Because I got the angle on them and there's not a lot that they can do about it. Yeah, he was pushing too much. I don't know what he was thinking. Oh, he wasted it. And then he used second wind, which is really nice for me. This was inevitable. Because he, like, wasted it, basically. Expected more from you. I think he felt desperate that he was going to lose those 30 seconds. That would have really hurt his team, so he just used it anyway. I put a turret at the something else I did there. I put a turret at their spawn after they died to put pressure on them and to make them waste their ammo. You have camera durability with this build. So Valerie was using a lightning hawk, which meant that I could just make her blow a lot of ammo for really no good reason. So if I put something there, they might get 10, 15 seconds off of it. But overall, I'm going to be hurting them more than they're hurting me because they're wasting so many resources on it. I locked the door here so she's easy hits. She has a yellow herb on. You can tell by how much damage Take she's it. taking. And I will kill you with my next turn. Get it over with. Stop resisting. Use your alt. Yeah, you can bait the alt out of her with that too. Use up all that ammo, Valerie. Think I care. One nice part is they're getting down a lot, you will never see your death coming. which is recharging Nemi. Also, air cannons and immobilizing shots count towards tracking rounds. So you, they start getting tracked off of that, which is really nice. Jan has the key card, so I'm kind of watching her, just messing with her. And what's interesting is Jan kind of runs off, so I put turrets up to mess with them, and then I go back to Jan. As they say... Without torture, there is no science. So Jan's going to try to be clever here and use her EMP, but we use a camera trick. Yeah, she's, she's going to try to do lockdown and she gives up on it. Waste your Don't ammo. Fuck with me. So I can't rotate, but I have a shield, so I can just do that. Well, bam. Easy. Something I do often is I switch off of cameras after they waste a ton of their ammo so that they don't get 10 seconds and they still have to commit the ammo. I think again here I set up for Nemesis. Except this time I'm going to try to pinch him in the other direction. Oh, I use a machine gun here first. Just die. You fight too long, you lose. So. I get paid. They're being kind of silly here. They're not really working together. Oh. Unfortunately for them. You're confident. <laughs> you are walking to your but what I'm about to do here is there's actually two things going on. Is You know I already set up my turret, right? Let me rewind a little bit so you guys can be ready for it when I, when I do it here. But what I'm doing now is I have immobilizing shots ready. And then I also already had my turret set up. But I know that once they turn the corner, they're going to have to deal with a high cal turret. So I do two things here because I just got Nemesis. One, I have a mobilizing round, so when they turn the corner, I want to immobilize shot them there so that my turret can get free shots. Also, I end up throwing Nemesis down because I have a free cam here. And what I want to do with Nemesis right away is I want to scream because when you scream with Nemesis, you can't move. It's like a jester scream. So that's a really good way to combo up turrets and then also Nemesis together to get a lot of damage in and also start securing downs. Okay? So you'll see that all happen right here. You're confident. <laughs> you are walking to your deaths. And the thing. See, I don't get Jan, so I have to use Nemi. She's shooting the camera, so I have to scream. And Tyrone's down, so that makes my life way easier. I don't have to worry about Dr. Tyrone. And we already know that Valerie used her ult, so she just kind of screwed. Don't even think about it, Valerie. This is not your lucky day. There you go. That's what you do against the Nikolai Death Squad.
Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that you're always going to be able to do that. There's going to be teams that are just really good, and they're going to shoot cameras like they're supposed to. What this team didn't do well was they didn't work together. They were all good, and they all knew what they had to do, but they didn't do it together. They were too busy running around. They were too busy being scared of the turrets. They all had to work together and then take the cameras down one by one. I wasn't going to make it easy on them, but they also didn't play the way that they needed to. And I would say the majority of your games are probably going to go that way. You're going to win most of them, but you're still going to run into those teams that are going to beat you no matter what. doesn't matter how good you are. So at the end of the day, Nikolai does have weaknesses, and people are figuring them out. And I think that's a good thing. I think it's good that every mastermind has weaknesses and that people are learning to play against them. All right, so this was Gun Nikolai. I hope I taught you guys some things. I hope you kind of learned a little bit about what you got to be thinking about when you're playing Gun Nikolai. And I hope I made a Gun Nikolai build video that actually felt like it was worth watching and not just a, oh, well, duh, no wonder you throw guns on Nikolai. That's what I was going for here. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know, again, what you guys think of me commentating over my own stream videos there. It's something new that we're trying here, but I think it really helps put in those little extra points that, you know, we don't necessarily cover in the beginning of the videos. And it also allows me to get like a good match of, you know, high level players. And it's not just me picking a match, recording and seeing what we get. So if you guys enjoy that, please let me know. If you guys appreciate that, please let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoy these videos, we stream every single night, twitch.tv slash swingpoint. I would love to have you there. And then with that, I will see you guys in the next video that we do around here.